Hello, welcome to my weekly roundup, my weekly reading vlog, uh, my first one of the new month. I had a busy week, or uh, eight days, beginning of the month, whatever. Uh, get this started with the first book I read this month, uh, Normal People by Sally Rooney. Not a big fan uh, about a off-again, on-again uh, teenage couple going into the college years. It had a show on Hulu I didn't watch. I didn't know. I went into it blind. I didn't know it had a TV show adaptation. I don't know why I say words like that either. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just pretty boilerplate. Um, you know, while I'm talking about this book, I might as well bring up the other book I read, uh, Blood Sugar. Another just boilerplate. I'm getting kind of, I think I'm going to quit getting these books from the low free library leave them for people who will really appreciate them uh the the stay-at-home mom the lonely housewife book i don't mean to judge them i'm i'm a lonely person in my house too i get books but i think those those books aren't for me and i'm not enjoying them and i'm seeing now that i'm just wasting time they're not gonna get better i found a, a few I found two or three that I really did enjoy, but I think I'm 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 get better at weeding the ones I I don't want. So weeding out the ones I don't want. But uh, normal people, plus say, uh, the, you could tell that these books are made to be uh, blood sugar about a a killer woman, you know, Dexter type. You know, I kill the right people, but. You can tell these books are made to be into are 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 made just so they could be made into TV shows. So they're uh, pumped out by crappy writers. I I hate to say it like that because they I think well they win awards and everything, but I'm I'm coming as I'm getting through my book life. I'm finding more about the book industry and how how they how some get uh, promoted more than others and why they get promoted more but that's for it maybe i should make a video about that but i think i'm done with the reese witherspoon Oprah room free book club type books that are meant for women i'm going to go through uh the books i got from the low free library and, and uh pit those all back i got a few selected because i wanted to I wanted to find some good ones, but uh, it's taking too much time, and I don't think I am going to find a good one. And if I do, if I do hear of a good one, I'll read that one. Anyways, let's get on to some good books that I did enjoy. Uh, Alfred Bester's *The Stars My Destination*. Very, uh, I heard it was good. It was great. I heard it was great. It was phenomenal. I heard it was phenomenal. It was awesome. It was. Uh, a corn, or cornerstone of sci-fi that I should have started with before I started The Expanse. Because this is basically a better version of The Expanse in a way shorter version without. <laughs> so I, I'm learning. I'm learning through my book experience. It's still my first. I'm still in my first year. I started reading hardcore, hardcore. I started my reading journey last year mid last year so i'm a probably uh at, at my one year point if you don't know i started reading uh dune or I, I started reading the will of time but i was only reading it every off and on and then i started ramping it up and then i started buying more books and it became it snowballed and now i'm making a youtube channel out of it anyways uh alfred bester uh i can see why this is so highly recommended about a man, uh, a, uh, a mechanic in space. I believe he's a mechanic. We don't really get into it. He becomes a, a, an outlaw in space, hunting down somebody he thinks who wronged him. I don't want to give away too much spoilers. If you seen YouTube videos, they, I, I'm, I'm very careful about my spoilers now. I realize that. And I don't like spoilers. So if you want to look for a good science fiction revenge story, that has a lot, uh, very detailed in the world building, very action packed. A little, uh, it was made in the 1950s, so some sexist, some uh, misogyny, 
you got to, you know, get past. I'm not saying get past that, but if you want to look past that, you can look past that. And it's a great book. Alfred Bester. Great book. I'm going to start reading more uh, Hugo Award winning classic size five like that. Uh, but then I got a standalone fantasy, uh, Susan Clark's Paranesi, another great book, another, uh, highly recommended, uh, book and it didn't disappoint. I, I go into these books pretty blind, so I'll just leave it that you should go into these book blind. It's, uh, I'll just say that it has to do with, a, a infinite, uh, house. If you know that trope, I've heard it. It is a trope. This is the first time I read it because, like I said, I'm a new time reader. So it's basically a, a house that goes on forever and a person is stuck in there. And I'll leave it at that. And uh, yeah, if you haven't read it, read it. And if you're on BookTube, you probably already heard all kinds of reviews and raves about this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, my next read. Uh, very good duology. I'm not sure if they're going to come. Uh, Becky Chambers is going to come out with a part three. It's good. Just t these two are just uh, well, well written, beautifully written. Uh, a, a monk and robot, the monk and robot duology. I'll call it. Uh, I'll call it and somebody else. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, Psalms for a wild built and a prayer for the crown shy. To uh, opt, uh, it says it an optimistic look in the future. I don't. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm ninety percent sure this is an Earth, though. They're on some moon on some distant planet next to some distant planet, where they destroyed their ecosystem, and they had to start over. And it gets. It, it's very eco friendly. It, it, it details the water filtration filtration the solar power the computers that are built to last forever the and then the robot i'm pretty sure he looks different in the story this is just the whimsical cover but the robots uh in this world they had artificial ai that or it became real ai and um there was some slave labor factory working and but we learned from that or the people in this world learned from it and the and the robots and the humans made peace but the robots went away and now one of them came back to discover how the world is and how well uh the humans are doing if i'm explaining it very well i always think about I'm going off topic here, but these are very good. These are very good um, books, very good reads. I always think about books like these, where they are another, another. It's another planet, and they never really bring up Earth. They have a pa Panga, I think, is the name of their moon. Anyways, I always think that maybe they're not humans, and they're just some aliens, and we got these books, trippy sci-fi stuff. I'm thinking, but maybe. You know, uh, Dax, the main character in this, the monk, they never say, uh, well, maybe they do say he's human, but they're on another planet and they never mention Earth. You know, humans aren't the only ones that can invent robots. Just my little, but very uh, good, very uh, cozy comfort. If you uh, like those, uh, not big, not big on plot, more uh, character development and as the monk is asking, really questions about life and the robot is asking questions about life it's very good i liked them very very positive i needed something positive to read that very negative i'll get i'm gonna get into some negative stuff uh because uh i read miles moz however you pronounce uh i read this uh duology too uh, it wasn't a duology. Uh, I believe they started printing the, the Arthur Arthur Spriegel. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. I believe he's deceased now. But I believe he started printing them in 1973. And this was a comic book series. And then this is an omnibus, I believe. I should do more research. These are just my thoughts. Uh, my Because I, I read the... Anyway, anyways. Uh... 
very traumatic. Well, it's the Holocaust. It's horrible, but it's uh, this cartoonist, this uh, comic book writer, maker, uh, interviewing his father about his experience in the Holocaust. And if you've seen any Holocaust movie or seen any Holocaust uh, movie or book or read any book, any, anything that has to do with World War II and the Holocaust, it's pretty sad and they 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 did the trains, the camps, the the racism, but uh what I did what made this story unique was I think the father son aspect of it, uh the father uh, the son interviewing the father and just the honest way. Of course we uh he depicts uh, them as mice, and the Nazis as cats, the GI Americans come in as dogs, the French are fault frogs. Anyways, <coughs> the, the father-son aspect. It's not for children though. It gets uh, there's some pretty uh, it gets some pretty graphic uh, stuff in here, but it's really a, a son interviewing his father, and I liked. I was a little annoyed at it at the beginning. Because it was getting pretty personal with the father and their everyday lives, and he he wasn't he wasn't shy about pitting his father in a negative light. And I'm like, this is your dad, man. Why are you writing your dad in a negative light? But I think it is a more realistic uh, depiction of his father, and it makes the story more real because he was a human. It was a a real human being. Uh, oh God, I have his. Uh, this is his uh, picture. It says that's the that's his father. Uh, leave it on there for a second. Give him you know R.I.P. Uh, his is weird because they have uh, this picture was taken. It says it in the in the lines there that uh, they it was almost like a, a post not a postcard but like a. Yeah, uh, dress up as a dress up in your uniform and take a picture in your old, you know, they were already freed. That's why he looks so healthy in this picture. But that was like a, a souvenir. Yeah, dress up in your old uh, camp uniform and take a picture. And it just goes to I, that just freaked me out, too. Just but I was talking about the story of uh, his father and the son and. There's also the mother, he tells, there's a comic within a comic where uh, he's uh, telling the story of what happens to his mom. I won't give any, it's about his life. I don't, I don't really feel comfortable using book term spoilers and smiling even. I shouldn't be smiling, but the way he did it, uh, the comic within the comic about his mom and how that affected his life and very powerful very uh it won the Pulitzer prize in uh 1992 and it does like it's uh like i said it's very uh realistic even though it is mice where the father and the son are arguing about nonsense and the father is uh uh the son even says it in here that uh he depicts his i hate to i hate uh, you know he says that i i I hate to pit my father in this view, but this is how my father was. He was a stereotypical kind of greedy, not greedy, but you know, uh, they use the word miser. He was very you know, frugal, frugal, if you want to. He was very careful with money. Where he, and, but how it affect, if you go through something like the Holocaust and you scrape for a piece of string, of course, you're going to come out of there and like everything's valuable. You might become a hoarder. Not that his father was a hoarder, but maybe you would. Or just very powerful. I, I, I just got done reading it last night and I loved it. I, uh, very, don't forget, it cause there are horrible things happening today. Well, let's get off the Holocaust. I'm sorry, I should, uh, but uh, get to my short stories. Uh, we'll start with my 50, 50 great short stories that I'm making my way through. I've just, I should have come up with this way 
first of how to remember these stories easier, I write a little note, a little brief note, you can't see it, of what the story is. And this one is about a Russian maid who gets accused of stealing a necklace from the help, or from her, uh, from the people she works for, but it, uh, yeah, as the upheaval by Anton Chekhov. Just a, a Russian little short story about a maid who gets accused of uh, stealing from the rich people. The Door by uh, E.W. White. Let's see, what was it? I think this was about... Oh yeah, feel, a, a man feels like a rat in a lab experiment. I looked this up on... All these stories have a... They're the 50 greatest short stories, so obviously they all have like dedicated summaries and videos on YouTube that you can look and they got half an hour videos on these four pages <laughs> and they're looking at it a deep dive than I am, of course. The uh, Cathanthiums, the Flowers Cathanthiums by John Steibeck, that was a good one about just a woman who is growing canthiums, canthiums. One of those words I can't pronounce. But it was it was very good. I liked it. Uh, uh this was James Joyce, A Day in the Committee Room. This is one of those ones that uh if it's almost like you have to have a history lesson to to even understand what's going on in this story because it's uh the committee room is about some guys sitting around in a in a committee room i think uh like in a local election and they're talking about the it's made in 1930 written in 1930 so they're talking about politician and there's an ireland i believe so they're talking about politician and world events that you don't know anything about and but they also talk and it's also in these books i could see i read some reviews when i signed up when i when I went on good reason as pit yes I'm reading this book I looked at some of the reviews and I said yeah these book these stories are boring why are, you know why are they great you got to take it with the time you got to read it with the, what time these books were written 1930s they're using slang you don't understand they're using references to movies or books or theater things that a uh, young person these and uh yeah most of these stories are take taken out of the New Yorker. So imagine a, a bougie 1930s New Yorker person reading these stories and just what kind of things they read nowadays. So yeah, just my thoughts. <coughs> uh, my Isaac Asimov, I finished. The last story was uh, the longest one, but it was by Gordon R. Dixon. I uh, heard of him a lot uh, across the river. It's uh, a story about a, a trope that, uh, but look at that artwork. Uh, a man traveling with a little girl through a dystopian alien or oh, uh, it's a time warp it was a time world uh let me time storm uh gordon r dixon i believe he wrote some books or some short stories about a time storm and they're traveling through the world or at least the u.s and the earth or the u.s the earth but uh low pockets of time warps so if you travel to let's say kentucky they might be in the Stone Age, or if you try, but just across, if you go through a, a little cloud, you'll be in 2034 and there'll be aliens. Yeah, so very trippy. I, I would like to read more of the uh, Time Storm universe, but uh, I, there was also some other books. That was a good one, actually. Uh, oh, The Street Worker by Chet Goffrey. Here goes some robots. It was about a robot detective in a bar. Uh, so uh, it was a short story, but yeah, just a robot detective in a bar. And it made me think of Murderbot. And it, it, it reminds me that these tropes have been around forever. Nobody's original anymore. 
Louisville Slugger by uh, get get this Jack C. Hadelman the second. Joe Hadelman's older brother. I didn't know he had an older brother who wrote sci-fi. But they, this does this was made before Joe Hadelman was even a writer. They don't even mention uh, Joe. They just talking about how uh, uh, yeah Jack Hadelman is a uh, is a good writer. A, a glimpse in the past. I like it. I read one. Short stories from uh, George Mark uh, from the Amazons too. I made a review about that, and w about George Martin, uh, George R. R. Martin writing fantasy, and the intro to it was like, oh yeah, this is his first take, one of his first takes into fantasy. Let's see how it turns out, and that was written in the eighties or something, and now he's known for fantasy. So, but Louisville Slugger is about it's only two pages, two pages long, but it's about. Earth goes into uh, an agreement with aliens. The aliens come. Well, okay, this is kind of a, a little one line. It's only a couple pages, but uh, from the backstory, you see that Earth somehow comes into contact with these aliens. They don't say how. It's just you know, past say uh, how they talk. You know, they talking about you show or you know. They say. Uh, yeah, I, well, I didn't eat any of these aliens. Why should I have to do this? So what we get from, what I get from, is that the aliens, that somehow the humans discovered aliens, ate some of the aliens. The aliens found out, you know, maybe like the poppers from Futurama, maybe like that. And the, and the, the aliens come and say, yeah, we're going to challenge you. Okay, well, you did us wrong. Uh, and we see that you like baseball, so we're gonna do baseball. If we win, we get to eat you guys. If you win, you get to continue to eat us. <laughs> and let's just say it doesn't go good for the humans. <laughs> but uh, that's very, very funny. Very, uh, I, I enjoy. Uh, some of my short stories and I'm getting a lot of more uh, books of short stories. I'm going to continue my short stories It gets in the way of my novels, but so what who am I trying to impress my Conan? I read a couple Conan Conan the Sumerian He's not a barbarian. That's right. I have enough to keep on saying I enjoy these books. Uh, I read uh, the devil in iron Which was good a good one and uh, the queen of the black coast which was uh, the probably one of my favorite ones when he's a a, a pirate and he goes on his adventures with uh, geez I can't remember her name but she's a badass pirate pirate two weird tales the queen of the black coast I was supposed to get not get rid of I was going to trade this book in because I have to uh, another complete collections of Conan, but then I ended up just reading these ones. But, uh, yeah, uh, Conan swashbuckling, destroying, killing, plundering, looting, trying to, uh, get it, make it, make his way through the world with a sexy woman at his side. It's Conan. Uh, you, you enjoy it or you don't. I do enjoy it. But I will admit that now that I've I've read maybe twelve plus the uh, Solomon Grande, not Solomon Grande, Solomon Kane. I read the Solomon Kane, and uh, there was another short story, Kong, a uh, crawl, crawl, and Solomon Grande and the Conan. They're all kind of bleeding a little together because it is episodic. Not to say they're not all unique, but they all do f go into a formula. So it's hard to pick out, oh yeah, when, what was, when he was with the elephant man, and when was he with the uh, gorillas, the, or the vampires, or the, or what green city? There's been multiple green jade cities. So, and there's been multiple pirates at this time, and multiple wars, so uh, I'm a, it's a little drawn back. Not to say I'm, I'm not enjoying it, but they're kind of melding together, and I've been reading it for like six months now. So, or maybe like four months, I'm not sure. Uh, but 
out of all the books, I would have to say my favorite would probably be the Alfred Bester. Uh, highly acclaimed. Uh, classic sci-fi cornerstone. Uh, Massacast, that's what they have it. That's what they say. I should just read the back. Number five in the Malayan sci-fi masterwork series. Um... Uh, uh, they got blurs from Joe Hadelman and James Lovegrove. Yeah. Uh, great book. It's only 250 pages. You can read it in one day if you really push through it. It took me a little bit more than a day and a half. I'm not trying to stress myself out about trying to read a, a book in a day. Unless I really want to get over with or I'm really enjoying it or it's just like... I don't want to read 20 pages. I don't want to leave 20 pages left. But, uh, and, uh, just mouse. I don't want to put that in a top 10 list or anything like that, but just, uh, yeah, uh, uh, to get back to mouse, I, I did see some videos about how it's getting banned and that's stupid stuff. I, I, like kids don't know how to use the internet. So the only reason I could think of, the reason to ban them is to just point a finger at people, certain people, and say, we don't want you here. And it does set an example. Some kid is going to is gonna see, oh, yeah, this book got banned, so it must be bad. Not just one kid, probably a whole group of, a whole bunch of individuals. Kind of sad the world we're living in, but let's... Look on the bright side, Paranesian was also good. The only, yeah, only disappointed ones were, uh, I'm gonna quit reading these ones. Go through my uh, my book box uh, and give them back to the little free library. They, I never bought them in the first place. I shouldn't be hoarding them. Not that I was, well, whatever. It takes, uh, I'm trying to get some good ones. So put them back out there. I don't think I'm gonna find a good one. So, not uh, what I'm going to read. Uh, since I just got done reading Mouse, I figured this would be a good time to just stay with the World War II theme and the Nazi theme. The, so I'm going to get Philip K. Dix, The Man in the High Castle. <clears throat> this one, uh, I like the cover. Well, it's a, a vintage cover. So, and I, uh, it's only... Uh, what, 200, 248 pages, so I should be done with it sometime tomorrow afternoon. His Greatest Masterpiece, World Famous Classic. Um, yeah, I was uh, lucky to find, not find, I found this at the local bookstore. Uh, always support your local bookstore, your local uh, Goodwills, your local little free libraries. Keep those well supplied. I admit I have to do more to uh, put more books in there. So, and I'll start with giving more of them back. Uh, I think we all have a problem with that. Sometimes we see a free book in there and we're like, oh, I want to read this. So I'll just take it. And then it sits at your home for a while. And then you're like, oh, why did I take this? I'm, I, I should just put it back into the world. Somebody is going to enjoy these books. I, 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 these are uh, relatively new books. So somebody will pick them up. I'm sure of it. But uh, just news. For me, uh, I joined a book club for local West Seattle, and hopefully, I got my book in. Uh, I can't, I can't tell you what the name of it is, and I don't want to get up right now. But I'll keep you informed in that. I'm gonna do the real life book club, and then I'll do my review. It, I got some time to read it, but first steps, and then I uh, joined a Discord, uh, Literary Science Alliance. As a YouTube channel, you also just check out. She's a very, I, I wish I could talk about books the way she talks about it. I'll just say it like that. Very envious. But uh, she mentioned on her YouTube channel that uh, she bought these short story collection books. Uh, Gods of None. No, it's Gods of, Gods of Sim. It's Gods of something. I'm sorry. But I went... And uh, she was saying that she was going to make a discord and a good way to follow what you remember and a good way to retain your short story collection is to talk about them and make little notes. And so I joined the discord and I bought the book and maybe I'll get more socialized on the Internet. 
and talk about some short stories because uh, like I said, uh, the Conan stories are kind of starting to bleed over for me. Not that they're bad, but uh, if I want to, I would have to reread a little bit of it and get a synopsis and be like, okay, yeah, that was the curse of this story. This was the shadow of that, st the sword of this story. I can't even remember the names, but they are good. I do enjoy them when I'm reading them. Oh, yeah, just the Conan's attitude, you know, just the barbarian attitude, you know. I love it. Swashbuckling, uh, high fantasy, monsters, uh, sexy ladies, gods and monsters. And yeah, very uh, good, very good world building, too, because they all got their own races. And yeah, there's uh, some, uh, like I said, you have to take it with the times. There's some negative depictions of black people and other races, Asians in particular he doesn't hey i haven't seen anything about mexicans in there so i he's a, a white guy in the 1930s if if you could find any book written before the 1970s that doesn't have something misogynistic or racist in it i'll be surprised well ursula k Le Grin did a good job i read those uh Ursies. those was really good i gotta pick up the rest of them i read the first three I'm going on my rant now, but well, that's what I'm here for. This is my week review, and if I want to talk about books, I'm talking about books. Uh, I am going to try to put a little hold on my book buying, and uh, I'm going to go through my my uh, my book collection, my book library, and take out a lot of the books I think that I wanted to read that I thought at least. I'm thinking at least 10 books I got from the Low Free Library all through my place and I could give back. At least. Yeah. Okay. But uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Keep on keeping on.